In this section, we're going to add more detail to the mantle by creating the column. Take a look at the photo just to get a sense of what it looks like. So there's this rectangular base, then you have these circular dowels, and then you have this piece in the supporting structure. First, take the select tool and double click so that we're inside the group, and then double click so that we're inside this component. That way, whatever changes we make on this panel, duplicate on this panel. Now we didn't take any measurements for this piece. We're just going to eyeball it. Let's take the rectangle tool, draw a square on the base here, and let's make it 2.5 comma 2.5. I want this separate from the back panel. So double click on the face. And notice sometimes in SketchUp when you double click on a face that's on the same plane as another face, it's actually entering the other group. To prevent that from happening, just go back, make sure we're inside here. Remember to use your hide rest of model. So that way when you double click, you're not going to open up the base group. Right click and make this a group. And now double click to open that group. And in this case, we can press Control H. That way we can see the rest of our model. Let's extrude this base up. About nine inches looks pretty good. Now for the circular pieces, we're going to draw a circle and an arc. The circle is going to be our path, and the arc is going to be our profile. Let's first take the tape measure tool, and we want to draw a guide point in the center. That way we have the center point. Next, let's take the circle tool, and instead of 24 sides, it's going to be a lot of geometry for a very small piece. Let's change this to 12. So type in 12 and press Enter and draw a circle out one inch. Next, let's take the line tool and draw a line straight up one and a half inches. Draw a line then in the red axis, 0.75, then back down, and then back over. That way we have the beginning of our profile. Lastly, we'll take the arc tool, and we don't want 12 segments, change this to eight, We'll start in the top point here, click once, click again at the bottom, and then move out for the radius. In this case, we're going to make it a half an inch. Now, just take the eraser and erase that middle edge. That way, that arc is just one face. For this to follow me, take the select tool and pre select the face, then click the follow me tool and click on the profile. And that's going to create our bowl or a rounded shape here. And you can see it duplicate over there because that's a component. Take the select tool now. You can actually delete this face here. You don't need it. It'll save on model geometry. We can erase this edge. And now take the select tool, double click on the rounded shape we just created, and then right click on it and make it a component. Let's just name this. Click create. Take the move tool. Click on the option key and copy this up, in this case in the green axis, one and a half inches. Now, let's figure out how many multiply. Let's try 12x. Let's try 15x. 16x. 16 looks pretty good. It ends right about there. Let's take this face then, double click on it, select the move tool, plus option. Let's copy this up. In the green axes, you notice sometimes for components it'll actually swap the axes location. Sometimes that depends on how you define your component. If you can't find the green axes, just move your cursor up a little bit further, hold down shift. Remember, you can lock in the green axes with shift. Take the push pull tool and push this up five inches. You can delete those guides as well. In the next section, we'll create and finish off the mantle, which is this element here.